Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a da ba we all know Square and Enix for their RPGs, right? Then we've got Atlas with the Shin Megami Tensei series, Game Arts with Lunar and Grandia, Quest with Ogre Battle. Some companies are made basically around an RPG franchise, like Monolith Soft with Xenosaga and Xenoblade. But what happens if a company known for other games tries their hand at an RPG? For instance, we've got Konami, who made Metal Gear, Silent Hill, and Castlevania, and then tried their hand at an RPG with the excellent Suikoden. What happens if Capcom, makers of Street Fighter and Mega Man, try their hand at an RPG? We get Breath of Fire. Let me come right out and say it. I like the Breath of Fire series, but I don't love it. The first entry in the series especially doesn't have much to set it apart from the games that came before it. Closer inspection of the game and comparison to other games that came out before 1993 really does make a few things stick out though. The story is not where the game sticks out though. The world is pretty nice, but the tropes and pacing are mediocre at best. The light dragons versus the dark dragons made me groan when I first saw it. I am simultaneously annoyed and amused though at how often this game makes you backtrack to previously visited towns and dungeons in order to progress the plot. Sometimes it feels that so little actually happens in the game because you're spending so much time getting all of these small pieces and putting them together in order to complete a much larger task. This becomes a trend in storytelling for the other Breath of Fire games, but but this one makes it the most frustrating. The characters are also, as a whole, middle of the road. When it comes to the heroes, this game introduces Ryu and Nina, who are the two main characters for at least most of the rest of the series. Ryu is an almost silent protagonist. He does say a few words in the brief moment when you're playing as Nina, and he does have a few words in the ending credits. You might have heard me talk before about my distaste for silent protagonists. Nina is cool though, a uh, spunky, energetic winged princess who does what she needs to do to get stuff done. She gets some better character development in later games though. Most of the other characters are just fine, but I want to give a special shout out to the other recurring character, Blue, the lazy, impatient sorceress. She's fun. The villains are kinda interesting. Zog and Jade aren't much, but Jade's four generals are fun. The game does a good job of either hiding villains from you, but then talking about them enough to get you wondering about just how powerful they are, or having them be a constant nuisance like the generals. Oddly, I think this game does the best with the two most important NPCs in this game, Sarah and Alan. Sarah is introduced as a mystery early in the game, but when you find out what happened to her, it's some pretty good storytelling. Even Alan, who seems like a nobody, ends up having a pretty great story arc in his brief part of the story. Where this game really shines is in its graphics and design. I had completely forgotten until I just replayed this, but this game has more battle animations than pretty much any game before it. Characters and monsters both have some pretty extensive animations. After you visit a shopkeeper, they'll either bow or blow you a little kiss. Even the walking animations have tons of charm. Just look at Bo's ears and how they flop while he walks. Adorable. Speaking of the monsters, their designs are good. Some monsters even change size and shape when they get closer to death. The town designs are just okay. The dungeon designs are a mixed bag. The maps can sometimes make each dungeon feel very long and overly maze-like, but the animated rats and bats in the dungeons are a really nice touch. I like that the overworld map has a day-night cycle, even though it's not really used much in this game. But then we come to the sound. I do not like the music in this game. Some tracks are pretty good, but most aren't great. I was really surprised to learn that Yoko Shimomura was on the team of composers for this game. Normally her work is top tier. Some of the music is held back by subpar sounds that are used for the music in this game, like Trade City, which is actually a really nice melody. I have my simple cover of that playing in the background here. Gameplay is kind of a mixed bag. First off, I like that this game is pretty easy. But many of the battles, random battles especially, are pretty boring. You can get by most of the time just fine in auto battle. At the same time, I'm glad that auto battle is there so that I can pay attention to, I don't know, like 
like a YouTube video or something that I'm watching while I grind. The most annoying thing about the battle system is the boss gets back up thing that most bosses do. This basically requires that you get a critical hit to end the battle. It seems to take forever most of the time, often longer than it took for you to deplete the boss's health bar. But some more positives. Ryu's absolutely overpowered dragon transformations. Karn's similarly overpowered fusion spells. Best of all, that your entire party of eight comes with you, and you can switch out characters at any time. Cherry on the top. Even characters that are not in the battle gain experience points and level up. So all in all, is this game great? No. But am I glad that it turned into a series? Absolutely yes. It has some charming touches and fun advancements, and the writing and gameplay only get better from here on out. Using my overly complex scoring chart and my own gut opinions, this game gets a 74% or a C. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed my review. As a reminder, this is all just my opinion. If you have any other opinions, let me know in the comments. Click the like button if you feel like it. Follow us for more and all that jazz. Maintain your groovy selves.